Hello. So today, this repair is going to be for the iPhone 4 battery connector. So iPhone 4 has this 4 pins uh, Foxconn battery connector. Uh, same thing with iPhone 4s. Uh, by the way, the, as the board you see right now, I did not do this. It's for canning like this. Um, the customer who tried to remove the, well, he succeeded actually, removing the battery connector without damaging the, uh, the solder pad significantly. But um, he wasn't comfortable about soldering the connector back on, so it was sent into the shop for repair. So what I did was I quickly cleaned it with alcohol because there was some flux residue left on it. And now I'm melting because I want to make sure these uh, soldering pads are still good. So I'm quickly melting some quick alloy and um, now I'm applying some flux because these uh, soldering pad, solder pads already oxidized so they don't hold solder very well. With the little bit of acid that's activating from with the flux while it's heating it up that allows as you can see like that allows the pre-oxidized solder pad to become more um, accept accepting the new solder that I'm putting in on the quick alloy low melting solder so the camera right now is a little bit off angle because um, this was recorded on under a microscope, and my camera doesn't record the entire image I see from the microscope. I only require uh, record the center of it. So one 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 thing I like to do is I, I like to move around the sort of bow generally from the quick alloy of a tweezer. I think the video gets stuck here a little bit. Okay, so so we we're back. Okay, I don't know what those yellow stuff are coming out of. I think that's the flux the customer used. I didn't really clean it off completely off the board from the alcohol I applied earlier. So now it's getting a little bit yellowish. Um, as I was repairing this connector, I was like confused about the yellow color. But I carry on with the repair anyway because I know that was the residue from previous repair done by the customer. Okay, so here I, I try to you know use alcohol and a toothbrush to clean off the yellow residue and the flux I put on earlier. Also very important as you can see one of the solder pad that's on the back. That's probably why the cost uh, a lot of people are not comfortable soldering this connector back on because okay I'll we'll get to that later. Uh, so now I'm using solder wick. The reason I'm getting rid of the low melting solder is because I don't I don't think they're good for connector because they're very brittle since the melting point is so low then that well the reason the melting point is so low is because they're very unstable. It's a very unstable alloy for strong connections. They're good for they, they they're good in uh, conductance. So they, they make good joints on small objects that you don't use too much force on. But for battery connector you exert a lot of forces and shear stress on yeah shear stress on to the battery conductor. So you want to have some kind of solder um, that actually hold on its own and it doesn't it's not brittle like this uh, low melting solder it doesn't break off so I'm trying to remove the low melting solder after I put it on the reason I used it in the first place it was to just to make sure and fill in the, the scratches and the gap of the pre-existing solder pad and make sure the solder pad was still good but now I don't I, I test that uh, I test that solder pads already so I don't need that uh, low melting solder anymore. Okay so this is a different kind of low melting solder. The solder you see before that was in Bafong that melts around uh, 50 to 60 degrees Celsius. This is a uh, uh, quick alloy low melting solder paste. So it's also low melting, consider low melting but it melts at 137 degrees Celsius instead of 60 degrees Celsius. I apologize for the quality of this video because uh, as I'm editing, some of the frames get chopped off, so it, the, sometimes it get freezes. But the original, which is not annotated video, uh, I think it's continuously play without any freezes in between. Okay, so um, you want you also want to tin the uh, the two connection in the back. You definitely want to do that. 
because the the way you lift out the the battery connector, if you don't tin the two connector in the back, and when you solder the connector, you want to solder those two joints on. Then when you remove the battery again, that connector is going to get ripped right out, or after a few times, it will rip, get ripped out. out. This is why some people are not comfortable doing this repair on their own because they don't know how to how they can do the first four pins with a small soldering iron, no problem. They could do this, but the the bot the two solder joints on the back, they not comfortable to do that because they don't know how, or they didn't have the proper equipment or the two like the low melting quick alloy solder paste. Um. Yeah, so now I'm just cleaning off the SS paste that's not needed, and it, it, it forms a bridge, which is it's okay because right now it's still you know it's mostly solderable, so you could scratch it off easily. It's not actually forming a bone in the bridge. Even if it does form a bridge, you can just easily push it off, like what I'm doing right now. So I'm just gonna melt off all the solderables because I I don't want to damage it by scratching it because it's already scratched pretty much. A lot and now I'm pushing the ball. See, it's it's not really it's not really a bridge. It's more like a lot of little sort of boys, sort of balls. Uh, I think it would be a good idea to put flux on it. I don't remember if I did, but if I were doing the repair right now, now is a good time to put flux on to the logic board. So yeah, this this ball was already pretty much scratched up before it was sent in from the customer. Hmm. What am I doing with the wig? I hope I'm not doing. Yeah, flux. See, the flux. Um. Oh, oh. Uh. Uh. I, I had experience buying the battery connector from China with a bad seller. Again, sell you used connector. Like they they just sell you bad stuff. So they they send you iPhone uh for battery connector or they send me rather. They were opened. They were not. Um, they were not in original packaging. I only get original packaging connected from now. It's all in plastic packaging. But China, sometimes you get like you know bad quality stuff from China that's that's used, and you don't want to get those. Those are bad. So what what those are? They they don't have the two, the gold joints from the back. Those two joints you don't get them, and that that's bad. Okay, so now I'm doing the soldering actually. I I put some flux on the joints on the on the solder paste area, and then I put the connector on top relatively to the position, and I call this method um back um hot air bath reflow method. Basically, since this ball has nothing on the other side or nothing fragile on the other side like a connector, I'm using a heat gun on max speed, max heat, probably at five hundred degrees Celsius and then I have flux in between the connector and the larger board. I'm heating it from behind the larger board. So the larger board itself with the, with the solder joint on it, low melting solder melts at 137 degrees Celsius, which I put on. I'm heating it from behind. That will melt those low melting solder. And these low melting solder point from quick alloy, the solder paste, actually has a very high shear stress uh, grade so it's it's um it's resistant it's it's not brittle uh, unlike the quick alloy desoldering alloy it, it's very it makes very strong bond for conductors yet it still melts at a relatively lower temperature which is 137 degrees celsius unlike the other left free uh solder used by apple it melts at 100 uh, 250 degrees celsius so the larger will start to get damaged at 300 degrees celsius with this left free so uh, with this low melting solder paste, it ensured me to heat as much as I want from the larger board without causing any second, well, any kind of damage really because I the heat is actually not quite at 300 degrees Celsius even if I use max heat, max air, max speed from the back heating with a higher gun. As you can see, these four solders are completely melted when I was touching the connectors and now they all form beautiful joints. It was pretty easy. Um, this repair really shouldn't take you that long. And most importantly, those two joints from the back, they also get soldered without much difficulty. You don't need you don't have no risk of damaging the connector, and no risk of uh, melting the connector, and it gives you a really easy way to fix this. 
you you can do the same thing with let 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 it solder that melts at 200 degrees Celsius, but that gives you a really big risk of damaging the board. So I suggest you get if you do a lot of these repairs, get quick alloy, quick alloy, um, low melting solder paste. It's very useful. And now I'm just inspecting the solder joints. And if you're not sure if the solder joint is completely melted, you can always use a pen to touch the, the alloy and it melts right away. So that you can reflow it that way. So um I don't know what's up over here. Oh no, I'm just inspecting the boards and cleaning it. Oh and one one more thing I wanna add. You wanna be careful where you buy these connectors. You wanna buy the new, you wanna buy them packaged in plastic, which we sell from our website, cyberdocllc.com. You wanna you want brand new, you don't wanna use connectors. Especially the one that's fail quality control. And you also want iPhone 4 battery connector for iPhone 4. I know it looks similar to iPhone 4S, but they're different connectors. Um, iPhone 4S connector only works on iPhone 4 battery, uh, 4S battery, and iPhone 4 connector, in this case, what you see in this picture, only work with iPhone 4 battery. So if you solder on an iPhone 4 connector on an iPhone 4S board... Oh, actually, sorry. This, oh, I, I, I wish I could take it back. I think this board was an iPhone 4S. Yeah, this board was an iPhone 4S. My bad. This is a 4S board, guys. So, um, actually this is a bad example. Yeah, this is a 4S board. So, uh, iPhone 4 connector only goes on iPhone 4, and iPhone 4S goes on iPhone 4S. You wanna be careful with that, especially. Yeah, this is a 4S board, my bad. Yeah. Uh, so I saw. <laughs> I wish I could take it back. Everything I say about the iPhone four. This is the iPhone four S connector. Everybody, solder onto an iPhone four S larger board. Okay. So yeah, this is not the iPhone four connector. I'm sorry. My bad. Four S. Four S connector. Anyway, back to my point. Four S has a four S connector. iPhone four has iPhone four connector. You do not want to interchange those. And some seller can distinguish the difference. They just sell you the same connector regardless. So don't 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 do that. Don't fall in that trap and buy from people who know what they're doing. Or at least they, they, they know what they're selling. They don't give you the wrong product for the wrong repair. 